Welcome back into the Extra Point. Tyler Head with you on your Tuesday morning. So we now know the field for both the men and women's Final Four coming up this weekend. Women's Final Four gets rolling on Friday up there in Cleveland. Men get rolling on Saturday out there in Phoenix. Of course, last time Final Four was in Phoenix. Uh, South Carolina was part of it. Unfortunately, not, um, not this time around. But it is an interesting group of teams that you have heading out to the Final Four this upcoming weekend um, for both the men and women's side. But I'll start off with the men, where you have Alabama, you have UConn, you have Purdue, and you have NC State. And given that this weekend is also WrestleMania weekend out in Philadelphia, it posed an interesting question in my mind in regards to these Final Four fields. Um because wrestling is the ultimate good guy versus bad guy story, right? You have to have some good guys. You have to have some bad guys. That's what creates the compelling product where you want to see one guy win or you want to see one guy lose, depending on which side of the aisle that they're on. And I feel like sports are very much in the same way. And, and sports are more compelling when you have somebody to cheer for, when you have somebody to cheer against. And especially in a situation like this where – you know, South Carolina is no longer playing in the final in the um, NCAA tournament field. You want to latch on to a team to cheer for, or you want to go against a team that you may not that you may dislike. So, so, so how does it end up working out? Who are the heels and who are the faces? And for those that are not familiar, heel is what is commonly referred to as a bad guy in professional wrestling. A face is what is referred to as a good guy. So, who are the heels and who are the faces going into the final four? This upcoming weekend, I think you got to start off with the easiest one of being NC State, being the uh, being the ultimate baby face. Everybody is loving on NC State right now. They are the miracle team that had their backs completely up against the wall at the beginning of the ACC tournament and went on this remarkable run that regardless of what happens this weekend, is going to go down as one of the greatest things in North Carolina State sports history to be able to make this run and catch fire at the right time um, through the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament to make it to their first Final Four in, uh, in roughly 40 years. Um, so they are unequivocally, in my mind, the mega baby face going into this weekend because nobody expected them to be there. They were an 11 seed. And it's one of those things that I, I personally felt like, yeah, okay, they're gonna, they won the ACC tournament That's cool. I even have them, had them winning in the first round of the NCAA tournament against Texas Tech, but this very much struck me as a team that, okay, they're going to win a game, maybe two, and they get bounced. We're going to give them their nice standing ovation. They're going to walk off the court, and it was a fun story, but thanks for coming. Um, and they have exceeded expectations at every turn since then and are now playing in the Final Four. DJ Burns is America's most beloved player in this tournament. Just a big guy that likes to have fun, always smiling, just enjoying himself playing the game of basketball. And you love to see that. It, it is very hard, unless you are one of the other fan bases up there in Tobacco Road. It is very hard to hate NC State going into this tournament, which is why I think they're the mega baby face going into this weekend. Purdue's an interesting one to me because I'm not entirely sure how to place them. Um, now, they're routinely one of the best programs in college basketball in the country on a pretty consistent basis. Um, Matt Painter as a head coach is somebody that I'd say is pretty inconspicuous outside of the Big Ten, um, where unless you're a fan of Indiana or another rival school up there, you probably don't hate the guy. And he's obviously a very good basketball coach, but doesn't doesn't really seem to rub people the wrong way or anything like that just kind of goes about his business as head coach from what I've seen um and I don't know anybody that has any like super mega hard opinions on him at least Zach Eady rugs rub people the wrong way a little bit um listening to some of his comments coming away from their win um against Tennessee over the weekend where he talked about oh nobody believed in me I got overlooked and all that kind of stuff like bro you're seven foot four D don't 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 play the underdog card. You know what I mean? Like, you were very sought after. You were very wanted. Now, does the NBA want you? Maybe not necessarily, but from a college perspective, you're that big. You're going to land somewhere. 
and obviously is now at Purdue and helping to in you know or helping to lead them to this final four appearance this weekend so I won't I'll put them in the face category but I will put them at risk of turning heel if that makes sense whenever you watch professional wrestling as a kid or if you do it now still like I do um there were always those faces that flipped back and forth where, hey, for like six months, they're a good guy. Another six months, they're a bad guy. You just never really knew which side of the coin they were going to be on. I feel like Purdue very much occupies that space of like, yeah, they're not maybe bad guys, but they could be at the drop of the hat. You know what I mean? They could get out the steel chair and hit their tag team partner in the back with it, and suddenly you hate them. Like, I feel like they kind of straddled that line a little bit. UConn is unequivocally a heel. I think that goes without saying. They're a long-standing college basketball power that's known to casuals. Like, if you think college basketball, if you're not a mega fan, you probably know UConn's pretty good. Like, that's not hard to figure out. Um, they obviously won last year, and they've been on a dominant run to the Final Four this year. Um, best margin of victory. Thir- they had a 30-point run against Illinois the other day. Uh, just an unreal team that is probably the favorite going into this weekend to win the national championship. Dan Hurley really puts it over the top. That dude is a, uh, that, that dude is a wrestling manager turned pro bas or a college basketball coach. In my opinion, dude is not afraid to say things on the microphone that are a little brash, a little controversial, very entertaining very good for content purposes, um, but that rubs people the wrong way. There's a cockiness to them, like I said, a brashness to them, which, hey, as long as you're winning, that's great. But as soon as things start going in the other way, people are going to be pointing and saying, ha, huh, not so tough now, are you, huh? But I think without a doubt, UConn, and I, they embrace it. I think they occupy the heel role, and I think they do it pretty well. Alabama is interesting. Because I think we're naturally inclined to think of them as a heel because of the power of what their football program's done over the past 15 years under Nick Saban. But basketball, I'd say, doesn't convey the same emotions from a national standpoint. Now, a little more locally and regionally here, yes, we have thoughts and opinions on Alabama from the standpoint of we know the intricacies of that program. We know about Nate Oates and how he is. But I don't think from a national standpoint, people view it in quite that same way. They're just like, oh, hey, look, Alabama's good at basketball now. That's cool. I don't think people are too necessarily offended by it. However, and I was listening to Bill talk to Jamie Bradford yesterday on the early game. He brought up a good point. Is there a, well, they just have it all, don't they, factor playing into this as well? Because, again, we've known Alabama as a perennial power in college football for over a decade. And now that, okay, well, Nick Saban is moving away or retiring, and and maybe they're going to fall back down a little bit. Well, now guess what? Their basketball program is really great. Now they're making Final Fours. They they just have it all, don't they? Why Why do those guys have all the nice things? We want some of the nice things over here. So that could play into it a little bit. Um Again, Nate Oates is a very unlikable person, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of people just because of how he comes off and some of the things that he says and the way that he carries himself a little bit. So I'm going to slide Alabama into the heel role as well. Not quite as big a heel as UConn, but definitely not a baby face, if that makes sense. Um, now, depending on how this weekend goes and how they react to whatever happens, could Alabama become more of a heel? Absolutely. Could Purdue turn heel? Yes. Could UConn turn face? No, I don't think so. Because Dan Hurley's going to have something to say whether they win or lose this weekend. Um, I think the only the only team that uh, we can safely assume is uh, staying babyface no matter what this weekend is NC State. Because if they win it all, it's a great story. If they lose in the Final Four or the National Championship game, it's still a great story regardless. And it's still going to be, you know, that team that everybody kind of rallied around a little bit um, as they went on this, um, you know, went on this magical run. So there you go. Heels and faces of men's basketball. I'll 
dive into women's basketball a little bit later on in the day, um, maybe on the halftime show, uh, as I'm flying solo today uh, with no Terry Ford. But, um, yeah, just uh, it's going to be a fun weekend for me. Final Four, WrestleMania, all coming together at the same time. I'm going to have to kind of dual screen that a little bit, but um, colliding kind of the best of both worlds there with heels and faces for the men's, uh, the men's Final Four. If you have any thoughts, who you think is a heel and a face going into this weekend, let me know. Firehouse of Sex on 803-404-6100. We'll come back and wrap up today's edition of The Extra Point. Get you set for the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on the game.